Hey there, philosophy fans, buckle up because today we're going time traveling. Destination, ancient Greece. Fuel, your insatiable curiosity. Airbags, we don't need them. We've got our thoughts to cushion the blow. But why ancient Greece, you ask? Well, we're going to hang out with a dude who loved triangles more than your high school geometry teacher and thought the real world was just a cheap knockoff of an ideal one. We're talking about none other than the toga-wearing, deep-thinking, reality-questioning Plato. Yeah, that's right. Plato, the ancient philosopher who, despite not having Wi-Fi or even a decent coffee machine, managed to cook up some of the most profound and enduring ideas in the history of thought. Today we're tackling Plato's theory of forms, the philosophical equivalent of you think you know but you have no idea. So get ready for a wild ride through Plato's world of the forms, where everything you see is like a bad bootleg version of a perfect ideal. Are you intrigued? Of course you are. It's going to be one form eidable journey. So pull up your virtual toga, grab a faux ancient Greek goblet of knowledge, mine's a double, and let's dive right in. All right, before we dive into the deep end of the philosophical pool, let's get a crash course on our main man, Plato. Born in Athens around 428 BCE, Plato was something of an ancient Greek rock star, minus the electric guitar and the questionable hairstyles. Plato's family was pretty well off, kind of like the Kardashians of the ancient world, but with less drama and more philosophical discourse. His birth name was Aristocles, but he was nicknamed Plato, which means broad, either due to his wide forehead or his broad shoulders. We can't confirm which, but either way, it's clear he was a pretty headstrong guy. Now, Plato wasn't just born into the philosophy game. He had a mentor, a certain Socrates, who you might have heard of. This guy was the Yoda to Plato's Luke Skywalker. Socrates didn't write anything down himself, a bit like that friend who never texts back. But luckily for us, Plato did, ensuring Socrates' wisdom wasn't lost to the winds of time. Plato was also the founder of the Academy in Athens, the first institution of higher learning in the Western world. Think of it as the Harvard of antiquity, but with more togas and less student loans. It was there that Plato taught Aristotle, who went on to tutor Alexander the Great. Talk about a LinkedIn network to die for. So there you have it. Plato was a well-rounded philosopher, teacher, writer, and thought leader of his time, even without the aid of a Twitter account. Now that we've covered the man behind the mind, let's delve into one of his most complex and intriguing ideas. The theory of forms. So what exactly is this theory of forms we've been teasing you about? Well, brace yourselves because things are about to get a bit formy. That's a word, right? No? Well, it is now. All right. Imagine you've just baked a batch of cookies. They're all different. Some are a little burnt, some are gooey, some have too many chocolate chips. Okay, scratch that. There's no such thing as too many chocolate chips. But you get the point, right? They're all unique, yet they're all still cookies. That cookiness that they all share, that abstract idea of a cookie, is what Plato would call the form of a cookie. Plato believed that the physical world around us, the one we can see, touch, smell and taste, is not the real world. It's like we're all living in a giant cave, watching shadows on the wall and thinking that's all there is. But surprise, surprise, there's a whole world outside the cave, a world of forms where everything is perfect and unchanging. You're probably thinking, okay, Plato, cool story, but how does this apply to my life? Well, think about it this way. You know when you see a movie after reading the book and the movie just doesn't live up to the image you had in your mind? That's because the movie is the physical world and the image in your mind is the world of forms. Your mind's version is always better, isn't it? Sorry, Hollywood. And it's not just physical objects that have forms. According to Plato, concepts like justice, beauty and goodness also have their perfect forms in this abstract world. So the next time you're arguing with someone about what is truly just or beautiful, just remember you're both probably just seeing shadows of the real thing. So that, in a nutshell, is Plato's theory of forms. It's a pretty trippy concept, but hey, it was ancient Greece. They didn't have Netflix, they had to entertain themselves somehow. Now let's take a closer look at how Plato's forms impact our understanding of knowledge and reality. Picture this, you're stuck in a cave. No, not because you're spelunking or hiding from a bear, but because you're part of one of Plato's philosophical thought experiments. Tough luck, right? So, in this cave, you and a bunch of other folks are chained facing a wall, kind of like a really low-budget movie theater. Behind you, there's a fire, and between you and the fire, 
there are people carrying objects. These objects cast shadows on the wall, and because you can't see anything else, you start to believe that these shadows are the real deal. Sounds a lot like folks binge-watching reality TV shows, huh? But here's where things get interesting. Let's say one day, you break free from your chains. Maybe you've been doing some cave pilates or something. You turn around and see the fire and the objects for the first time. Mind blown, right? But it doesn't stop there. You decide to venture outside the cave, and you're blinded by the sunlight. Once your eyes adjust, you see the real world for the first time, with all its beauty and complexity. It's like going from standard definition to 4K Ultra HD. Overwhelmed and excited, you decide to go back to the cave to share this revelation with your cave buddies. But guess what? They think you're nuts. They can't comprehend anything beyond the shadows on the wall. They might even feel threatened by your stories about the world outside. Kind of like when you tell your friends about a great new show you found that's not about dating, cooking, or home renovations. In this allegory, the cave is the physical world we live in. The shadows are the imperfect copies of the forms. And the world outside the cave is the world of forms. The journey from the cave to the outside world is the journey of the philosopher or anyone seeking truth and knowledge. And the resistance of the cave dwellers, that's just human nature, resisting change and clinging to what's familiar. So, next time you're stuck in a Netflix binge, remember, there's a whole world of forms out there. Speaking of entertainment, let's imagine a bit of philosophical sparring. In one corner, we have Plato and his theory of forms. And in the other corner, we have a lineup of intellectual heavyweights ready to challenge him. Let's get ready to rumble. First up, we have Plato's very own student, Aristotle. He throws the first punch, arguing that Plato's forms are a bit too formless for his liking. Aristotle is a hands-on kind of guy. He wants to know how these abstract forms connect to the concrete objects we see and touch. It's like he's saying, Plato, I love your creativity, but how does this form of a perfect pizza translate to the greasy, cheesy goodness I get from my local pizzeria? Next, we have the British philosopher Bertrand Russell, who steps into the ring and questions Plato's separation of the physical world and the world of forms. He's like, sure, Plato, I see your point. But don't you think you're creating a rather unnecessary split here? Why can't the perfect form of a thing and the thing itself coexist in the same world? Sounds like someone's making things overly complicated. And finally, we have the pragmatists. They're not just one philosopher, but a whole school of thought. They're the folks who think philosophy should be about practical results. They're looking at Plato's theory of forms and saying, this is all well and good, Plato, but how does it help us in the real world? I mean, it's great to ponder about the perfect form of justice, but how does that help us make better laws or fairer societies? Ouch. But hey, any good idea should be able to take a few punches, right? And despite these criticisms, Plato's theory of forms has been hugely influential in Western philosophy. So, whether you're a die-hard Platonist, a skeptical Aristotelian, or just someone trying to figure out what the perfect form of a YouTube binge looks like, there's no denying that Plato's got us all thinking. Now, you might be wondering, why are we still talking about a theory that's over 2,000 years old? Well, my friends, that's because Plato's theory of forms didn't just stay in ancient Greece, no, it packed its bags and has been traveling through time, influencing thinkers, fields, and even pop culture. First stop, mathematics. You know those perfect circles and exact numbers we love to use in math? Yep, that's Plato's influence right there. He believed that mathematical objects existed in the world of forms. So every time you solve an equation, remember, you're taking a little trip to Plato's perfect world. And it's not just math. Plato's theory of forms has a first-class ticket in the world of aesthetics, too. You know when you watch a movie and it just feels perfect? Like every scene, every line is just how it should be. That's because filmmakers strive for that perfect form of storytelling, the one that exists in the world of forms. But it's not all highbrow stuff. Let's take a detour to the world of video games. Ever played The Sims? You know how you can create the perfect life, the perfect house, even the perfect sim. Well, that's Plato laughing in the background, because in a way, you're striving for those perfect forms. And it doesn't stop there. Plato's influence extends to the core of Western philosophy, shaping our understanding of truth, beauty, and morality. It's like that one friend who's always there, pushing you to think deeper, 
to look beyond the shadows and seek the real forms. So next time you're trying to solve a math problem, appreciating a beautiful painting, or even playing your favorite video game, remember our friend Plato. And maybe, just maybe, try to catch a glimpse of those perfect forms. It's been quite the journey. We've explored ancient Greece, hung out with Plato, and even delved into the mysterious world of forms. But alas, all good things must come to an end. Let's quickly recap what we've learned. Plato's theory of forms is all about the world of perfect, unchangeable and eternal forms that exist beyond our everyday experiences. Remember our cave dwellers? They were stuck watching shadows, unaware of the true reality outside. And in a way, so are we. But we're not just talking ancient history here. Plato's ideas have echoed through the ages, influencing math, aesthetics and even our pop culture. So it's safe to say that Plato's still got some street cred. Now as we bid farewell to the world of forms, we leave you with this thought. Next time you find yourself daydreaming about pizza, consider this. Is it just your stomach rumbling, or are you actually longing for a taste of the perfect form of pizza? Before you go, don't forget to smash that like button, share this video with your friends, and subscribe to our channel for more mind-blowing, time-traveling adventures into the world of philosophy. Until next time, keep seeking those perfect forms.